It's time. When I heard those words that morning, my heart literally skipped a beat. For nine months, we had been waiting for this moment. It was here. It was time. I suddenly played back all the scripts from the Lamaze classes we had been taking, all the things that we needed to do before we headed to the hospital. It continued slowly, this labor and our excitement built and built. Until about noon, we decided we'd better check in with the doctor. He examined where things were and decided that we could wait as long as possible since we were in town and then go to the hospital. Everything was looking good. And so we busied ourselves doing all those things that we normally did and things to get ready, phone calls made to parents to let them know what was going on and arrangements made And then it was time. The labor had intensified. And we headed for the hospital. The birth pangs had begun in earnest. Oh, what excitement and anticipation. We didn't even know whether we were going to have a boy or a girl in those days. Why is it then that when Jesus says all this stuff is but the birth pangs, we get our shorts all twisted up in knots. We got get all gloom and doomy. It is but the birth pangs. It is the dawn of new age. And yet all we can see is the end and not a new beginning. It's very interesting that the Hebrew scriptures end differently than the Christian Old Testament. The Hebrew scriptures are arranged in such a way that the last book is Second Chronicles, which leaves us on the doorstep of the exile. It is coming. It is inevitable. It's a reminder to those who read the Hebrew Scriptures that Israel is always but a breath away from exile. It seems to be their history. From the moment of creation, they've been exiled. They're exiled from the garden. They find themselves in exile in Egypt. They find themselves exiled in Babylon. They find themselves exiled in their homeland, homeland with Greeks and Romans. They find themselves exiled, their nation destroyed scattered to the four winds. They are exiled in places like Dachau and Auschwitz. But in the midst of that is the story of God's dealing with his people in exile and crisis. He keeps taking them back, going in search of them, and bringing them home. The Christian Old Testament ends with Malachi and the promise of the Messiah. It becomes the bridge between the Old and the New Testaments. It makes sense. But as we turn to the end then of the Christian scriptures and the book of Revelation, 
we think differently than our Jewish brothers and sisters. We see it as an end of what is yet to come, of a day to fear. As someone once recently told me, I love to hear about Revelation because it should put the fear of God in everybody. But that really wasn't its intent, if you read it carefully. I spent most of the pandemic last year reading Revelation. And I think I have some new insights. I'm not sure the framers of the Christian scriptures were all that different in their intent than our Jewish brothers and sisters. What if we read Revelation not as an end, but as a reminder that in the midst of crisis, whether it be the destruction of a temple, being thrown out of the synagogue, persecutions, pandemics, that in the midst of the dark times, in the midst of all those things that go bump in the night, God is with us. Not so much bringing things to an end, but providing us a new life, a new way, a new day. And that in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of all that is wrong with our world, God is reminding us that it's but the birth pangs. A new day is dawning. Labor has begun. It's time to remember and to get ready. Now, I admit that by the time we reached the hospital late that afternoon, I was pretty anxious as well as excited. Was I ready? Had I done enough? Had we gotten everything ready? Was I even capable of being a good father? All of these things were jumbling through my head as we wandered down the hall toward maternity. And there was a familiar face. Pam Wine, our Lamaze instructor. She was on duty as a nurse that day. And in that instance, I knew we were going to be okay. Because we weren't alone. And isn't that the message that God wants to give us in these times of crisis? We're not alone. We will get through this. Because it's only labor. It's just the beginning. The birth pangs. And oh, what awaits us? A new day. A new dawning. A birthing. It's time to get excited about what is yet to come. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. 
Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from their throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they will never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is a promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God, who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing on the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all fears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn.